In pharmaceutical biotechnology, recombinant proteins may be tagged with a polyhistidine motive. These histidine tags allow us to purify proteins with a bivalent nickel ion resin. In this video, we will explain how to perform gravity flow column chromatography using this kind of resin. Collect your lysate samples and dilute them with buffer if necessary. This is especially required if your protein concentration is high, which could affect column binding and flow in a negative way. In our case, we increased our two samples volumes from 700 microliters to 2.5 milliliters with Z buffer. Now, get your equilibration buffer and your column parts and wet the column filter pad in the equilibration buffer. Also, do not forget to cut off the plastic end of your column to open it up. Get the wetted filter pads and push them into the bottom of the column. You may want to use a pipette or something else to help you. Set up your column and remove the cap. Make sure you can position something underneath it to collect the column flow through. Take your resin out of the fridge and gently swerve it to resuspend the beads. Add your resin to the column. In our case, we used one milliliter. Allow the resin storage buffer to drain out of the column. Once the storage buffer has drained, you should be left with a resin slurry of about half the starting volume. You should also add equilibration buffer to your samples. The volume you should add should double the sample starting volume. In our case, we added 2.5 milliliters of equilibration buffer to our samples. Allow your resin to equilibrate by adding a volume of equilibration buffer equal to the amount of resin you added at the start. In our case, that is one milliliter. Because the resin is a slurry, it is possible to disrupt the packing when adding samples or buffers. Therefore, you should dispense buffers or samples slowly against the wall of the column. If at any point the slurry is dislodged though, you can let it settle again by adding a little bit of buffer if necessary and then tapping the column to agitate the beads back into place. Once the equilibration buff has drained, close off the column and add your samples to the column. After adding your samples, wait around 10 minutes to allow any suspended beads to resettle. After waiting, grab some vials to place underneath the column. Open up the column and then collect the flow through. Wait for the samples to drain. It is best not to drain the column completely at any stage to prevent the resin from drying out. That's why you should always stop the draining early enough to leave a small layer of buffer or sample on top of your resin. Close off the column and run the collected flow through through the column again to allow maximum binding. Collect this flow through and store it. Now it's time to wash the resin, which will force out aspecifically bound proteins due to an increased concentration of the competitive binder imidazole. Get your wash buffer and apply an equal amount to the amount of resin you added at the start. In our case, that is one milliliter. Collect this washing flow through. This washing should be done three times with new washing buffer every time. 
Finally, it is time to elute the bound histag proteins with elution buffer. This buffer contains an even higher concentration of imidazole, which will completely bind to the resin and force the histag proteins to elute. The amount of elution buffer you should add is equal to the amount of resin you added at the start. Again, that is 1 milliliter in our case. Allow the resin to resettle for 10 minutes and then collect the alleyweight and store it. Do this elution step two times to obtain two elution fractions.